Welcome to Stripping the Dipping, episode 9 of our summer series Shutdown. And listen, I need everybody to put their hands where we can see them and get down to the ground because this is a DPD takeover with your boy AMG Dent, the brilliant Mr. Black, and what can I say, our home girl, Denny, FIA girly, absolute bad boy episode this is going to be. I'm so excited. So I'll start off with you, Denny, first of all. How have you been over the summer break? How have you survived without like F1 on our st- screens for so long? <laughs> Hi, <laughs> thanks for having me again. Um, summer break was amazing. I think I survived because I got to go home. So I was telling Georgina that it was like right on cue with like the last few races I flew home. And so it was just recharging, being with my family. I hadn't seen them in a long time. So it's like the UK can get a bit tiring sometimes. So sometimes you just need to like step back. So it was fine. I went to like this resort to the beach. We were like away from like civilization and cities and stuff like that. And so I really enjoyed it. I was coding, so I think that saved me from um, the boredom. So I was just looking at different strategies and coding those and learning new things to do with um, with uh, the first F1 package. But overall, it was really fun. So I went back to action. We'll see how it goes in the next half. Black, you see the productivity. You see what I mean about Denny. Oh, no. like, she's always, always, always on another level. It's so impressive. But you know, I'm just saddened we didn't get invite. You know, to this uh, holiday um, resort because we all could have used Next it time. as well. <laughs> Next time, yeah. We could have used it as well. Black, what's up? What's I got here as well, man? How's it going? What have you been up to over the last couple of days? I'm good. I'm. I feel like, I'm, uh, you know, on my holiday, I did zero coding. Uh, you know, I didn't fly anywhere too exotic, you know, um, I was in Mallorca, uh, and then now I've been back to work. So, you know, uh, you know, hopefully we can learn a bit over the next, uh, hour or so from Denny, how to be more productive, how to be, how to be so incredible. Um, I'm, I'm well, I'm really into homework and, you know, from every episode I'm on, I always talk about the homework. I listen to episode 28 of stripping the dipping which is uh when denny you were on last time and uh you know you were slumbering a few uh i'm looking forward over the over the interview to hear uh whether you still have the same opinion uh or whether you might have changed your mind so yeah i'm really looking forward to it Dun, dun, dun. Okay, well, <laughs> this is it's gonna get really spicy, and we love to see it here at Shipping and Dipping. But first of all, let's just get into it. So, um, on this episode as well, just to kind of set out for the listeners to, you know, we're gonna ask Denny a couple of questions, you know, and kind of like touch on a lot of the hot topics that have happened throughout the summer break. But also, you know, I felt it'd be really nice just to get to know more about the girl behind FIA girly, and you know, try and get like Denny's like rationale and some questions as well. We're gonna put forward to her. So uh, it's going to be a really fun episode, very interactive, and we encourage you guys as well, you know, to put your responses in there as well. But probably the most recent thing to start off with, Denny, is we had Lewis opening up, you know, um, a lot in the new kind of um, release that was made with the Vanity Fair magazine. And yeah. I, I like, I'd love to get your thoughts on it, because for me, it was really eye-opening in, in a sense, and almost very heartwarming slash heartbreaking when, you know, Lewis finally come out now and, and like openly kind of expressed his feelings on the day of the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix last season. You know, some of the trials and tribulations and adversity he's faced as like, you know, a black man or a black person just generally growing up, some of the racial abuse and experiences he had even as a kid. You know, and, yeah. and kind of this is things for the future. So my kind of question to you is, what, what were your thoughts on that initially? And, and what have you made of the things that have come out in, in light of this kind of uh, public release? Um, I think that was very important. That was a very important interview on so many layers. First was Lewis first finding a source that is going to portray his story however he wanted to and tell his story how he he tells them because um if we look at previous um news outlets magazines things like related to the sport they don't really tell lewis's stories or lewis's side of things the way they're meant to be told and with the respect and dignity that a black person deserves i think it's very different to be interviewing with max verstappen and then the lewis hamilton because with black people there's so many things you need to actually take care of take be careful with and there's a lot of things you need to take into consideration where you put in our picture 
or an image or a video in the context you put in things. So I think it was so important first. The first layer was Lewis finding a safe space where he saw and he said, yeah, right, I will tell my story to this source and I trust that the right, so the editor, whatever, will put it out in the way that I, 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 I'm well seen and heard. Um, but then also him feeling comfortable in, in his shoes and the situation that he's in and accepting um, Abu Dhabi and upset, accepting the type of person that he's grown out to be and where he is. Because he didn't just speak about the sport, right? He spoke about so many things. He spoke about um, how he grew up and so many things that we hadn't heard before, um, like him being um, abused, physically abused on the street and the exoneration process of 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 after being incriminated by his principal and had more so and all of those things. So I think it was so important to hear that side of Lewis that we don't really get because he's so alienated by the media that we so well look at, look up to, which is the F1 journalists and all of these people around the sport. And so for him to sit down and say, yeah, right, I feel comfortable enough to tell this story and I want people to understand what it was like to be in my shoes this whole time then I was I was just super proud of him. Honestly, you just couldn't wait to like give him a hug or something. Oh, and honestly, <laughs> Denny, I share exactly the same thoughts as you as well, man, on that one. Because again, like I feel for Lewis, has always been a feeling that like with him and just the specifically as well the motorsport media world, he's always had to kind of like move a certain way because. Yeah. you can't trust them you know and there have been times where he said stuff and the media in his very early career when he was with mclaren would take it and try and use it to, to weaponize him you know and like you mentioned as well like a lot of the drivers not all but the majority they kind of come from a sheltered background or you know they're kind of fortunate enough to have like you know parents that you know could shelter them for much kind of extended periods of their lives whereas like you mentioned there with lewis this a lot of the experiences he he went through are quite you know bespoke and kind of unique to a person of color especially if you're talking about you know some of the more traumatic stuff as well like him being a street and going to the corner store and being you know mobbed by two racist guys which is terrible you know or even just when he's at the go-karting circuit and like um the the other parents would say oh well don't share your gloves with lewis because you'll steal them and, you know these, yeah. these things are so traumatic especially for like a kid you know to experience such like surface blatant racism from such an early age and then to grow up with that and even at mclaren as well i felt that at times he was muted maybe the way ron dennis was running the team at the time they didn't want too many kind of like headlights or too much negative press so it's always felt that like his voice has been kind of muted or, or, or almost like everything he said has been taken out of like context in a way to kind of put him down and to weaponize him but like you said i think vanity fair was like the perfect kind of media platform for him to get those sorts out you know and to say a lot of the stuff that we actually think but don't often get the opportunity to say you know and i'm um, mm. like i'd like to invite you on this one as well man what was your take on on lewis's kind of comments in vanity fair magazine yeah i mean it took me a few days to bring myself to read it because i knew that it would cover uh, abu dhabi and uh I didn't want to sort of hear, I don't know, it's weird, isn't it? You get invested in people. I didn't want to read that pain, but actually then having read it, there's so much to identify with, you know, the experience at school, the experience growing up. He's from Hertfordshire, which is uh, uh, in the home counties. So those of you that know England, that's a kind of quite a white area outside of London, very traditional, uh, some of it rural. He grew up in a sort of a new town as I did. Uh, so I could relate to a hell of a lot of it um you know can i can i ruin the mood because um you guys are keeping it classy and you know denny you you could you could be the classy one on this episode <laughs> i i i found it hilarious uh that vanity fair came out and then and then max verstappen was in a, a magazine can can you remind me of the title i feel like it had a third um, word in it do you remember that like kids something kids, like a sport kids, kids. sport sport week <laughs> sport week kids something like that <laughs> sorry you guys are being so classy and serious like for me like that epitomized yeah i mean i don't that's the thing we don't even it's he doesn't right, he was always lives right. in your head rent free i don't remember i don't remember but all i know is that that epitomizes that just uh like what we're dealing with you know lewis hamilton in the September edition, which I'm told by people that understand fashion, etc., uh, you know, the most important edition of a prestigious magazine, he he'd kept his 
uh, you know, his, uh, his silence on a lot of these matters for his life, entire life, and on Abu Dhabi for over eight months. Uh, and as soon as as soon as he speaks, it's ratings. Uh, and then if I'm yeah. being unclassy, his quote unquote rival is then in a kids magazine. And it was very enjoyable on Twitter watching people try to compare the two. So yeah, sorry for lowering the tone, but you know, I felt it had to be said. <laughs> No, Black, I think it was sensible and it just goes to show you, you know, like the, the magnitudes of where Lewis is in his career and then, you know, some of the other drivers on the grid, which, you know, have not been near like nearly half the adversity, half the kind of heartache, half the kind of discrimination, half the kind of adversity that he's had to kind of like work his way through, you know, and we will be on a lighter note on this podcast with the next question kind of on the theme of Lewis's generally, but to kind of break it up as well, as we mentioned in the intro, we're going to be asking Denny some uh, funny kind of questions as well. So to throw the first one in, Denny, like, um, that's what I like to call like the interactive question. So you basically get to pick a driver for each kind of uh, block. But bear in mind, if you pick that driver, Denny, you can't reuse them for any of the further questions in this episode. So you've got to choose wisely. But uh, the first one... I can't Denny, use the same driver twice. Is that what you said? You, yeah, you can't use the same driver okay. twice. Okay, cool. So bear that in mind. But uh, the okay. first question of our interactive questions is, let's say, you know, you have to, you know, go into town on a date. But you, you obviously <laughs> have to jump in a taxi to get there. And basically, mm-hmm. when you're in the restaurant having the date, there's also like somebody you want to avoid. So this is basically a, a game of taxi, date, and avoid. And you have to pick three drivers to basically go in each one of those things. So one driver that's going to be a taxi driver, one driver that you're going to be on a date, and the other driver, which you just, quite frankly, want to avoid at all costs. And like we said, uh, if you pick that driver, you cannot reuse them again. Right. Okay. So I... <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting um i would uh either i don't know i think i would my myself wants to be esteban Ocon to be the taxi driver just because he's like up there for me but i think i would probably because i want taxi rides to be fun so maybe daniel being the taxi driver because i think he's gonna say something she will make me laugh and then i'd obviously go on the date with Lewis. <laughs> I think that's the most obvious Good choice. choice. <laughs> yeah. And um, I'd avoid Max at all costs. Just for this first one, I'd probably avoid him. Yeah, I pro- I, honestly, Danny, I would have probably picked the same options too. I think Ooh, Danny yeah. Rick is just a, like a taxi driver. It's just like, yeah. it's just too funny. Like, and you know what he's like as well? <laughs> well just say you want, something. You, know, you want to get there though, right? Is Danny Rick actually going to get you there on time? <laughs> good question good question Black. Australia lit- listenership has now gone through the floor apologies at least you got, got there safely because you know he wouldn't be speeding anything like that oh <laughs> exactly. fair, point, fair point fair point fair point you know and he wouldn't want to pick Lewis on like a day or in my case this is just a bro to this the thing is well Denny, if I ever met Lewis I just think I'd be starstruck like Usually when it comes yeah. to guests, I try and come up with as many great questions as I can. But if it was Lewis, I just don't know. I'd probably ask him like the dumbest question. <laughs> he just do that like thing. my first impression as I remember like of meeting him was um I was telling we were like in the meeting and we were waiting for him and now was, um, I was I was telling them I was making an impression of Antoni Giovinazzi um mac and cheese because he was so outraged that Kimi had picked mac and cheese. And I was doing that with like an Italian accent. And then he comes in and he's like, oh, all I had was someone telling a joke about mac and cheese. And I was like, oh, that was me. What is... so let me move on from there. <laughs> let me tell you. I was just like, oh, oh, what do I say now? So yeah, I, I completely get you the starstruck thing. Hey, well, I mean, at least you styled it out, though, to be honest, Denny. If it was me, <laughs> at least I, I made him just... laugh. Exactly. You know, that's something you can always put on the CV, right? Like, making Lewis Hamilton to laugh. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> that's amazing. Well, listen, I'm going to let Blag ask the next question. So, Blag, you can take it away. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we talked a bit about the Vanity Fair um, article. And in fact, when Lewis uh, had, you know, all that prestige, all that profile, he was nowhere to be 
he was in Africa. Uh, and I think we only found out because he was leaving the first country he went to. Where did he go to? Uh, Rwanda. Yeah, one of them it? was Rwanda. Yeah. Yeah. And then he went to, yeah, we thought he was in Kenya, but he wasn't. He went or something to Namibia like first. Namibia. There we go. Yeah. So, I mean, the next question is, and you talked about your, your summer break as well. Um, you know, the, the importance that Lewis sort of has mentioned of exploring his roots. What did you take away from, you know, what he's said so far about his trip to Africa uh, and, and how important do you think it is for black people, even if they're of uh, Caribbean or, or American heritage to, to, to go and, um, and visit Africa? This is really interesting, actually, because I had this exact conversation with um, with a few friends earlier when he posted his Kenya pictures and, and um, caption is um, one thing people, I think, forget maybe it's not I'm not blaming people but like we need to understand that Lewis was always exposed to he's he he just only recently we can say that started identifying as a black man and started standing up for these things and living up to this to his purpose and starting to understand what black people um kind of face and how we have to fight these things right after the Breonna Taylor and George Floyd I think it was 2019 where he spoke about starting to a hundred percent feel like he's a black man, right? And we can't really blame him because he wasn't born into like coming from Stevenage. Stevenage, like you said, F1 black, that is a very um white, Eurocentric, and he's from there, right? He is English, he is an Englishman, but then he never really looked like those people. And when he walks in, he goes to the school to school and he's on the street, people are telling him, go back to your country, but he is in his country. And so personally for me, obviously I can't speak for Lewis, but seeing him in this journey kind of fills my heart, fills my heart with like really, really like joy and happiness for him because he's slowly starting to find himself. And even though he's from the Caribbean, or his ancestors are from there. His forefathers came from somewhere in Africa, and this is where we don't know where the link is, whether he he found out by asking his dad or speaking to his grandfather where his forefathers are from, where his great-grandfather is from. At some point, there is a link somewhere to, to, to Africa. His roots are probably there. And for him to be there with his friends and be in such a wholesome moment where he's learning about the culture of the people and going to these beautiful places like the dunes and um, being with the tribes and seeing wildlife because it's stuff that he ap actually appreciates. And even in his Western life, if I can put it that way, is absolutely starting to see. It's great to see because there are people that are black and they have African ancestors and they have African descendancy and roots, but don't claim it and choose to be part of that. I am English and I'm this and don't stand up for the for the people that are asking for help and all these things. And to see Lewis for me is just an, a really, really important um, moment. And I think a lot of black people can sit down and reminisce on that, that not many of us get to claim our identity because we're born into um, white dominated countries and he has two white moms for instance and all the culture that he knows and the food that he knows everything is western and for him to come out of that and say look guys i want to go there and i want to meet as much and we don't even know what he did besides the pictures that he showed right we don't know when he's planning to go back maybe he's on a whole journey of finding himself and finding his where he actually maybe belongs because he has never really fit on the other spectrum of his um his race i guess and so i just i just think it's really important for people to do that and if you get the chance to do it go for it and he did so that's that's great you know, i i'm intrigued about going to africa my dad's from africa i've never been so you know as someone yeah. up in his you know <clears throat> 30s or something you know, need to start planning. Uh, and so that was an inspiration. Dens, look, we don't ask you enough for your insights on this show. You're always asking the great questions. What do you, what do you think about uh, Lewis's summer trip to, to Africa and the importance of people, particularly people of Caribbean uh, heritage as well, to, to visit Africa, to understand the continent and the culture there? Absolutely, Black. That's a really great question. And, you know, one I'm very happy to kind of explore as well, man, because... 
you know, I mean, we, we're seeing it not just obviously with Lewis, but also with like a lot of footballers too. You know, you've got the likes of Callum hudson Odoi, young Chelsea player. You've got Alex Awubi. I think growing up in, in England sometimes, like, it feels as if it's really hard to identify with being, you know, so what British or so what English at times as well, you know, when you go to school and then you get your ass kicked by the teachers or by bullies and then, you know, you're racially going through all of these kind of conflicts. It's tough, you know, like when somebody asks me, what, what is it to be British other than drinking tea? You know, there's not really many other things you could really mention, you know. So I think it's always good, you know, when a sports person or anybody in that capacity, you know, can kind of like look at the roots, kind of go back, you know, to kind of where their ancestors are originally from as well. You know, and that's the thing with Lewis. And I want a lot of people as well listening to this podcast to know that, you know, like whilst the system sometimes feels like it can be against you, the one place that will always accept you and will never, ever, you know, turn its back on you, the one place that will always like love you unconditionally is home. And when I say home, I mean back home, you know, it, it, back home in Africa, back home in the Caribbean as well. Like when you go there and stuff like that, you really start to understand like the value of life, the way of living, this, the way things are over there as well. And, you know, I think it gives you a whole new perspective and a whole kind of meaning on life as well with a completely new, uh, renewed perspective, you know? So I think for Lewis, it's great that, you know, he's doing that because he's universally loved everywhere. You know, you even see in Brazil, which is something we could probably talk about later on this episode too, just kind of, although he's not born there, because of his admiration for Ayrton Senna and because of just his his way, just his his aura, his energy, just the stuff he does for the people. Just um there's loads of Brazilian people that kind of claim him as one of theirs, you know. And I think it's the same thing with, you know, having an African background, having a Caribbean background too. So you know, it, it's so kind of key. And I think at some point we will have to kind of go back and, you know, to retrace our roots and to, to kind of explore, you know, life much more than, you know, the the kind of like a uh, hot melting pot that is, you know, London or England or kind of where we reside for the most part, nine to five. No, I, I couldn't agree more. And, um, you know, um, while I think this is, there's a spirituality to the travel and you'll see Lewis presumably come back and ready to go. Uh, if I was, you know, this is me now, now with my F1 black cynical hat on. If I was either one of uh, Rwanda or uh, Namibia, I, I would expect to see a deluge of tourists following in, in Lewis's footsteps. And, and why shouldn't they? So, so let's see. And um, I'll segue and ask the next question. And uh, before I hand the interview back, back to Denz, um, which is quite, you know, qu quite a, quite a, a fun one. Uh, Lewis is probably going to be solely responsible for um, the Kailami Grand Prix being back on the calendar at the um, F1 or Liberty shareholders meeting not that long ago. Uh, Stefano Dominicali uh, mentioned that um, in October he should be a, he should be able to announce more about the calendar for next year and hinted at new new races. So we could see F1 returning to. Um, to Africa for the first time since I think it was 1993. Um, but the question for, for Denny, uh, when, when she's back on the line, is if you had to have a hot lap at any circuit with any driver, noting that you can't pick the driver, the drivers you, you avoided, got in the taxi with or had a date with, where would you have the hot lap and, and who would be driving it? It's a good and question. I think we can there, cut right? that. Go on, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we'll just style it out anyway until she's back because yeah. I'm sure yeah. she won't take too long. But Go on, Dad. You know, Tell like, me who you think. <laughs> man, like, obviously, Kailami is an amazing circuit and we have an amazing guest back as well, Danny. Hey. Um, Hi. Uh, I don't know who so, will happen there, but I could hear everything okay. you guys were talking about, so maybe you just couldn't hear me. Uh, okay, that, that happens a lot. You're, you're in the same um, kind of... Uh, exclusive club as Mario Andretti. So that happened to him. So there we are. You're, okay. you're a world champion. <laughs> Claim to favor. Uh, yeah. So I, I was just asking, um, so the we, track, we think, yeah. you know, yeah, we, yeah, exactly. We, we think that, um, you know, Lewis is probably going to be responsible for bringing Kyle army back on the circuit, uh, on the race, yeah. uh, the race calendar. 
So you tell us you you can't you've got to pick a driver in a circuit for a hot lap, and you can't have Danny Rick. You can't have who was it Esteban Ocon? No, you didn't pick him. You picked Max uh, Verstappen, yeah. and you picked Lewis yeah. Hamilton. So which driver and which circuit for a hot lap? Off you go. Um, I would go Charles Leclerc, um, Suzuka. Danny, you sure you want to make it alive? How's your neck? <laughs> How strong's your neck? <laughs> I would, I would go Charles Suzuka. I think that is such a fun track and mm. it's so fast. And if there's one dra- one of the few drivers that absolutely go through corners, either Charles or Seb. Okay, I'll go with Charles just because maybe that's going to be a fun question for Seb. But um, yeah, Charles around Suzuka would be, would be my ideal lap if Lewis isn't there. So long as they're not on plan B for barrier, you should be all right. So <laughs> Den, why don't you... yes. why, while we're here, Dens, who would you who would you pick and what track? Man, um that's a really great question. Hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I recently did like one of my um kind of last to first challenges in the sim. So that was at Istanbul Park. So, you know, just Again, another crazy circuit, you know, that's got a lot of elevation changes, the very infamous turn 13. And actually, if we're going to talk about, about like drivers, you'd probably want to experience that with. I'm going to actually say Seb, because obviously, um, I don't know if you guys remember that kind of uh, funny incident you had with Mark Webber that time where both of them crashed out at turn 13. And like yeah. Mark Webber was absolutely fuming. And then <laughs> Seb was just making like a kind of like look like a kind of like sign like this guy is like a lunatic. Like he tried to kill me. <laughs> kind of like So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that would bring up some very interesting memories for Seb. And not also just that as well, even in recent memories. Um, mm. If we're talking about Charles Leclerc, I think um, Charles had a bit of a howler, I think, back in 2020 when you're trying to dive it down the inside of Sergio Perez on the penultimate corner, went completely off the circuit. And then Sebastian Vettel managed to pick up that um, that final podium place. I just yeah. remember this the image, you know, of Lewis's eyes just watering over, like just with this relief and this happiness and this f- fulfillment. And, you know, Seb coming over to him as well and shaking his hand. And, you know, me and Black discussed it on this podcast too, that, you know, like, Lewis and Seb, they, they've been a bit up and down. They've obviously done some karting together, some junior formulas together. Things got a bit hot between them and Baku many years ago mm-hmm. where Seb mm-hmm. just completely lost his head. <laughs> he thought that Lewis break tested you him. Know, not sure how. But uh, you yeah, know, just Seb, like... Seb and Lewis have a podium every year since 2009, a podium together. Ooh. So, yeah. Denny, if you had to Hopefully, get your crystal ball out, you think it's going to happen again before Seb retires? I hope so. <laughs> I'm praying it does. That would be amazing. I don't know. I don't see it happening anytime soon. But who knows? F1 is F1. Yeah, it's it's true, Denny. You know, and obviously the technical direct directives have been pushed as well regarding the flexi floor and a lot of things too. Yeah. So yeah. I know certain team principals have been trying to make out that it's not going to affect them. But you know, as Toe always says, the stopwatch never lies. So we're going to see very soon when we go back in Spa and then the remaining of the season as well, just to see how much it kind of does affect certain teams. And you know, maybe there are teams that have also incorporated this uh, flexi floor that we're not even privy to or haven't really been in the limelight. So it could be really interesting. And before I take over from Black, Black, just um, who would you have picked for your hot lap circuit and, and driver? Uh, I think I'm going to annoy everyone because can I cheat? I don't think you stipulated F1 driver, right? You just said driver. Uh, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. Didn't all right, all right. Right. Either. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> see, see, I do. See, you don't like... Uh, this is why, uh, Denny, you, you took umbrage at Abu Dhabi. You don't like cheats, you know. Okay, fine. Which <laughs> case? Yeah. Which case? Uh, you don't like Sergio Perez either, but that's another story. So, um, <laughs> oh my goodness, Lord of mercy. <laughs> so, who would I pick, and what circuit? What circuit do I like? Current circuit. Hmm. So, I I just want to feel the speed. So, I think I'd go to Monza um, because right. I just want to see that car doing like two twenty, two thirty at top speed down the straight with like zero rear wing. And who would I pick? Well, if you're in if you're in um, Italy, you've only got one team, so that's Ferrari, because I want to hear the crowd, the tifosi. Uh, and if I'm hopefully living not vicariously, doing. yeah, hopefully not. But well, we'll see this year. Um, and so you've gone for Leclerc. I'll go for I'll go for Leclerc. We'll save science for another one. We'll save. 
I'm not playing See, tactics. Leclerc's a good driver, yeah. But I think corners <sighs> with Leclerc are more fun than straights. <laughs> <laughs> Leclerc's a good driver, but corner. The, is that, are you are you alluding to the fact that sometimes he goes straight on corners? No, stop. I think we need to stop the Leclerc slander. Yeah, we need to stop. But no, just the I'm way just... he sets up his car, the way he likes his car, I absolutely hmm. love to see that. Because I know um, when I started watching, one of the few things was I directed myself straight to the drivers, which I found fun to look at, and I was like. I could probably decipher what the driving style of these people are. And so I started studying them. And then late last year or mid last last year, I was like, Charles Leclerc is a really good driver. And I want to know how this man drives. And so I would load like lots of telemetry for that driver. Like every race, I would look at Charles telemetry. How does he like his car? How does he take his corners? And how does he like the setup of the car and all of these things? And so I think corners with him would be something that I would definitely risk to go for. Well, you know, I feel like I'm going to be safer because there's a lot of, um, you know, at the end of the, the the front straight in Monza, you can just crash through the polystyrene and keep going. So I think, it's, I think, I think I'll have the last laugh, but there we go. Okay, I'll hand back to Dens now. You, you can ask the next one. Go on, mate. Like I was going to say, you're going to run a, a low down for a setup with, um, with Charles on the banked version of, of, uh, of Monza. No, no, no. This is the thing. I was gonna go. I was gonna go IndyCar, and I was gonna go around that around Monza there, but you wouldn't let me. You didn't want me to cheat, so you know that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, the man, the cheat. <laughs> you know, we we really have an episode on cheating, man. And you know, our boss Georgina was very vocal. You know, on the ramifications that that could potentially hold for certain people, a certain Company Mexican policy. pinata. You know, yes. that, that may have sold his uh, soul to the energy drinks company. But uh, we don't speak about that on this podcast. <laughs> so anyway, Denny, new question. You know, the sad kind of thing, and we've seen it across in the world of tennis, Serena Williams is kind of like playing with all of our emotions. She's playing with my emotions. And like basically alluding to the fact that at some point, she will inevitably have to retire. And I think I think the they day that happens... They retirement already. <laughs> that's the thing like she's saying it so cryptically so i was like maybe it's just me being in denial and just not wanting to accept you're it you're probably but... in denial <laughs> <laughs> i know i know i know i know <laughs> but uh you know hey, he's in denial in every second every moment in everything okay liam lawson i got your back man <laughs> don't worry georgie i got, I got liam neeson <laughs> Not loss and Nason for you this time. Don't you worry. You could get taken. <laughs> if if you will get the reference there as well, I have made an absolute howler on one of the uh, intro episodes with our great friend uh, Bryson Sullivan. So if you haven't checked that episode out, please do. But uh, yeah, don't worry, don't worry. Liam Lawson and Liam Neeson will soon turn up to your ends, Georgie. They're waiting for you. <laughs> but uh, kind of bringing it back to the topic of the question, Denny. You know, like um, at the end of the day, you know, like. We will have to say goodbye. You know, th there's always kind of a life after a life, I guess, or an afterlife, you could put it that way. You know, and, and Lewis has been quite kind of like clever, you know, with kind of, you know, doing the stuff that he enjoys outside of the circuit as well in terms of his music, in terms of his fashion. You know, there's even talks about, well, there even was talks about him potentially having a cameo role in a Tom Cruise film, which I thought would have been absolutely splendid, if I must say my, so, so myself. But, uh, you know, one of the other kind of things we saw was, um, you know, before the kind of summer started, uh, there were talks that maybe he was going to make an investment in Chelsea. Sadly, it didn't happen as a Chelsea fan myself. <laughs> <laughs> but however, you know, he his um, his interest and in investment has been successful in relation to the Bronco NFL team. So just from your perspective as well, Denny, what are your thoughts, you know, on Lewis kind of like setting up for life after like racing with all of these different investments and, you know, what, what could you see him doing once, you know, he finally kind of like, um, you know, puts his helmet up and puts his feet up for a bit? Um, I think, I think Lewis is creating the legacy outside of the sport. Like he's a big personality and he has... I know people don't like to see this, to, to say this and admit this, but he has outgrown Formula One. And I don't think there's anything besides obviously fast cars and the, the nice racetracks and fans. There's nothing Formula One can offer Lewis right now, um, unless you're obviously just going to complete, to continue to increase his salary every year. So 
I think it's great that he's expanding his businesses. I think it's great that he's expanding his investment. At some point, he's going to have kids and his kids are going to live off something. And that money is going to come from these buildings he's making and these investments and teams and all that. That is always going. Is I think we need to understand that this is investment that is going to come back as financial help to maybe someone somewhere else. It's a fortune that he's building. So I think it's great. Um, we need to admit that Lewis is getting old. He's the oldest there besides, like, next to Fernando, right? He's the second oldest in the grid. And so at some point, he's going to be tired. And he himself said he doesn't want to retire when he's completely burnt out. So I think by the time he's 40, 41, he's going to put his helmet down. He needs to roam around other things. And to have these many interests and doors open for him is so great. He could go <laughs> be... um an actor in Top Gun, he could go release another collection with Tommy Hilfiger, he can go sit at Kanye's house and make music and drop an album, he can now go to the US and have, he has a house there and sit there and watch the Denver Bron- Broncos um, roam into maybe win a Super Bowl, Super Bowl or something, I don't understand football like that, <laughs> but um, I think he's amazing, I don't think he's a um, a man of just doing one thing, even though he says he likes to just focus on one thing. I think he loves to be around and doing different things. He just never sits down and says, okay, let my brain do other things. Like he has Mission 44, he has the Hamilton Commission, he has Ignite, he has Accelerate 25 with Mercedes. And I just think his future is bright and he has so much energy and he's going to continue to train. So by the time he's 50, he's going to be so young, still running around to Paris, New York and all these things. And I can't wait to see what the future holds because... Team LAG is going to ride with Lewis regardless. I feel like he's also going to document his journey regardless of being an F1 or not. There's always going to be media outlets talking about the projects he's making. There's always going to be teams reporting things. And um, yes, it's, it's exciting to see him like expand into other worlds because F1 just, it's a bubble. He's burst out the bubble and now he's just reaching for the stars, do you know? Absolutely, Denny. To be honest, I think he is already one of the stars, man. Like he's just, he's just Lewis. Like you just, you just like. And the thing with him as well is like, no matter where he goes in the world, like he always get recognized. People always like you know know him for his achievements. And another thing I'll just kind of mention on that too is you know like where I'm just so impressed and so flattered with him is he has so many like commitments and so many responsibilities as well. Like you mentioned, Denny, and like it doesn't seem to like stop him or it doesn't seem to kind of like distract him in a way from you know driving the car on the limit and maximizing its performance if anything and i think that is what makes lewis so unique from any other driver is i think these causes they fire him up even more they they like you know like actually how do i even put it man like it's almost as if like it gives him a new lease of life and a new kind of purpose which i think is amazing you know, and Black, what are your kind of like takes on that too? I'm incredibly impressed with all of the different causes that, you know, his charitable and philanthropic uh, philanthropic ventures. On the, on the investment in the Broncos side, I think um, we're, um, I don't know, treating him differently because he's, um, you know, a black driver or a black uh, figure. You know, like it just shows he's got his money right. He's He's investing. He's smart, you know, like we shouldn't underestimate that he's a smart guy. He's looking to invest in a profile franchise. Clearly him or his financial advisor thought that this was a worthwhile venture. So yeah, from a kind of sporting perspective, it's interesting crossing from one code to another. But in general, it just shows that, you know, he's got he's got the people around him to make sure he's investing his money correctly. And, and you know, if you're earning, you know, what is it? 40 million US dollars or pounds or whatever a year, solely on the salary plus plus any endorsements you've got to you know you're, you've got to invest that money in good job so so yeah it's it's intriguing but also like let's just not forget he he's a shrewd guy clearly he's just read up on investment and doing a good job too so true so true black you know and um yeah it, it's a really exciting time you know as uh, as a team lh kind of fan as well because i mean you know you've got other drivers for example like seb for example which you know has announced his retirement and you can see that he'll probably have a lot of kind of things he'd like to do a lot of initiatives to kind of push and stuff like that as well but 
I just don't think it's the kind of same in terms of like Lewis, which has that kind of Hollywood kind of appeal and aspect. At the same time as well, like Black mentioned, you know, all of these positive causes and things he does for the betterment of people that, you know, are less, well, less advantaged or, or don't get the same opportunities as well. So very, very key. And to kind of bring it back to the interactive question side of this podcast as well, Denny, this is the next one for you. So let's say not only is Sebastian Vettel stepping down from, from Aston Martin, but Total Wolf as well, you know, like um, Susie's had a really great year in Formula E, smashed up Stoffel Van Dorn, Formula E world champion. She's kind of said to Toto, Totes, I don't know if she refers to him as Totes, but anyway, I'm just going to say that. <laughs> Totes, I just think, you know, like we need to spend more time with our boy Jack, you know, and, and, and just kind of like, you know, live behind the scenes a bit. And she's like, you know what? This this um this person on Twitter, this FIA girlie, I think she'd be an amazing replacement team principal at Mercedes AMG Patronus F1 team. And the board agree. So you become the new team principal. And as the team principal, Denny, this is your first responsibility. You have to pick either somebody from team lh or f1 twitter and these are the three roles you have to recruit on you have to pick a new technical director you have to find a podcast excluding stripping the dipping of course because uh i think um well george is already taken by liam neeson <laughs> and um you have to also find a mentor that's going to basically, you know, be around for, for Lewis and George, you know, to, to help them out, you know, and to just kind of like cheer them up once in a blue moon as well. So you've got to recruit a technical director, a podcast to do the social media stuff, and then like a personal assistant for both drivers. Who are you picking from the F1 Twitter world slash Team LH community? Uh, okay, I know the podcast, I was, I'm going to go for Quick Stop F1, I think Whoop! it's so, so, so important so important to have black creators in the environment to have safe spaces like i said in the beginning the way we deliver things the way we approach certain conversations you can't just have your counterparts do that there has to be from black people so i think quick stop f1 would be my go-to i think nyasha and tandy are absolutely amazing um mental what would mental entail what are they doing is it like stuff in the head kind of psychology kind of imagine like uh angela cullen kind of okay. um yeah just kind of you know this there to kind of help out and and just to kind of like let's say you know if um that meanie christian horner has been a bit of a twat and said something yeah. really mean you know just to kind of lift <laughs> lewis's spirits a bit um i think mental i'd have to go um i don't know if, i think you guys know um, my friend athena she is absolutely, absolutely yeah, no, she's amazing with words. I know she's been my mentor for many, plenty of times. So I think she is the go-to when you need like a little cheer and a little put into perspective. Her brain is amazing. Her mind, the way she thinks about things and the way she expresses them as well, is absolutely stunning. So I think she would be the mentor for the two drivers. It'd be, she put them in the right headspace, I think, because she puts me in the right headspace. And as if Tim Principal is okay, I think drivers would be okay. And um, technical director, ooh, this one's hard because I know a lot of tech people and I'm super proud to be in this environment where tech is the influential part of F1 for me. It's not just like the stand side of things, but team LH, tech, ooh, I think there's two people I'd want, to, I'd want them to meet out there. Um, I think I... The most obvious thing right now, just because I can't just pinpoint other people, I'd have to say Bryson. Good choice, good that, choice. Yeah, I think that's the, the most obvious thing because that's like the one of the biggest tech names for Team LH specifically. So I think he would be like the, the, the yeah, it would probably be him. Probably Bryson, the technical director. See, Denny, this is what they need to make you the new team principal, man. Like, the, the rationale as well was so, like, poised and, like, well explained. And, you know, and also, whilst we're on the topic of it as well, big shout out, you know, to Quick Stop F1. You know, obviously, uh, Tandy and Yasha as well doing their thing. And just being, you know, I almost say fearless in just the way that they tackle some very 
tricky kind of topics and make it in a way that's like digestible and actually relatable for people to understand. It's such a huge skill that people underestimate. So huge out quick stop. Obviously Athena as well. She's one of the homegirls too. Tarmac talk. Make sure you guys obviously are go and follow her as well. She's amazing. And then Mr. Bryson. Bryson Sullivan, man. He's just that guy is like literally our Adrian Nui. Like people need to actually deep that in. Like, you know, Bryson's just understanding and comprehensive knowledge of this, the, so, like it's so technically advanced. Some of these topics we talk about, like, you know, wake or, or kind of like, you know, turbulence or, or kind of dirty air and these kind of topics as well. And this is his ability to kind of break it down to the, the average Joe like me, you know, and just the way he does it as well is so engaging. So huge shout yeah. out to those people. And then Black, who, who, who would you pick? So let's say um, you are going to be like the co-principal uh, of the, the Mercedes F1 team. Who, you, who, well, who would you pick in those three kind of roles? Yeah, I'm, so I'm... Because, uh, so let's say that the social media role is full, the technical director is full. Uh, I'm, sporting director has to be filmer because, you know, sure, that, sure. Guy, that guy in the stewards room never going to stop. Never going to stop. He's like the... You know, like uh, the evil Wario and then the good Mario. He's like the Mario of the Jonathan Wheatley <laughs> kind of in the mirror. So I think the guy uh, for the sporting director as we're building this team out. Um, and then, yeah, I'm trying to think like in charge of pit stops. Like I'm trying to create a really calm, friendly, um, non-judgmental environment. And I know that Thanos doesn't really criticize Mercedes pit stops. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring Thanos in and I'm gonna put him in charge like chief mechanic because uh, I I feel like um, you know that's the sort of uh, safe space we want to create for our uh, you know uh, our pit team so so those those that's who I pick uh, as my as my people in the team. What about you, Dens? Who are we? Who else are we bringing in? Who else do we need? Man, we need head of logistics. You know who are we bring in? <laughs> Oh man, now you put me on the spot, man. Well, no, well first of all, I was going to compliment well. the, the kind of choices you made. I mean, Filma, aka Jay, this is amazing, man. And I just love the way he rattles people as well. And I pray, I've, I I literally pray that it continues just because that guy is this, his banter is just like, like comedy gold. Like he's the best. So big shout out to Jay slash, you know, Filma. And obviously, Uncle Thanos, you know, Uncle Thanos. And like you said it perfectly as well, Black. I think in terms of Mercedes, like, literally ride or die like you know you'll never see him like put down mercedes like he's not going to be one of those people that like hide behind the bushes or kind of like says things to make people feel nice he's very honest but at the same time as well that loyalty and just you know that commitment to perfection i definitely get from thanos and at the same time too man uncle thanos can cost you know <laughs> i heard him telling somebody to go suck the mother the other day and it was sweet so um yeah, can't lie. Our Uncle Thanos is a great person to have in the team as well because he has no, he gives no Fs. And I just love it as well. You need somebody with a thick skin that can, you know, like give it as well as taking it as well, man. So big shout out to Thanos too. And then logistics, 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 man. Um, Well, can we elaborate on that further? Like in terms of like, you know, logistics in terms of the team, the equipment, the, the, the drivers? This guy's got to get, or person's got to get the team from, you know, from Silverstone all the way over to Monza, all the way over to Kota. They're responsible for getting everyone from A to B. I don't know who we could pick. You can have any Ooh, role well, in the team you want. Well, I, I think I know the perfect guy for that, man. His, his name is Brad Philpott, another legend ah. to the channel as well. Again, super reliable, knows how to drive a car on a sixpence coin. You know, he's got very good tyre management skills as well. So, you know, the you know how we live in a cost cap generation, like the tyres <laughs> probably last, you know, like, like for years. So that's always <laughs> a shout out too. And, you know, this, again, really, really this good person, always willing to answer good questions, always, you know, like, very kind of like positive minded and progressive too. Big shout out to Brad, man. I definitely think I'd have him as the head of logistics too. 